Hi, first off, it's an honor for you to be here. Thank you so much. Um, my question is actually a little bit unrelated to this, but relevant to business cycles itself. No, don't ask me what's happening to interest rates. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so with technology being so powerful as it is today and the speed of information dissemination being much faster than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago, yep. people are arguing that the speed and like the rate of effectively business cycles is changing and, it, and that's shortening. I just wanted to ask what your take on that is and like whether or not that reaches a peak and then at that point on like business cycles would tend to last X amount of time or what the general narrative yeah, on that is. I mean, is. I think a lot of the speed is just in the sense of the ease and speed of what you can do transactions. You know, if you have to produce a good, it still has to be produced. It has to be loaded on a truck, shipped across the, I mean, so the actual production, shipping, transmission of that. But when it comes to information or payments, if I was saying payments is really subject to this. And they're, they're good and bad things. So like I said, one of the concerns with any kind of real-time payment is once it's made, it's done. So if you got conned into some phishing email to give somebody your account number and password and they drain your bank account in two seconds, it's gone. Now, if it had a little delay, maybe the bank could double check and say, hey, you know, is this really a valid uh, mm -hmm. payment or not? Should we really process this? You might want to contact the customer and ask them first if they really intend to this and why they're doing it. So sometimes that delay is actually allows you to, to prevent fraud in the payment. And there's lots of fraud in the payment system because of this. And the more faster these things happen, that's what fraudsters love. The faster they can get the money to move back to their open pockets, that's what they like. So there is a downside of it. The more recent events that we saw with Silicon Valley, we saw a bank run of unprecedented speed and magnitude because you can just electronically get on your phone and move $100 billion out of a bank, or at least put the order in. Doesn't necessarily mean now that they got it cleared in time, but that's what we saw with Silicon Valley Bank. So Silicon Valley Bank on March 9th, Thursday, March 9th, that night, they needed $45 billion for out order out deposit outflows that day. We arranged this through the discount window. We woke up the next morning, there was 100 billion of orders waiting to be processed. And we, we cannot process things at the discount window that fast. Something we're gonna have to actually think about and try to worry about. So these things have raised a lot of issues about how do you wanna do things like payments. Do you wanna speed them up or do you wanna slow them down a little bit? Do you want people to be able to move 100 million out of a bank like that and then send it over FedNow and it's gone? Th those are serious questions that have to be confronted.